let's apply in a university. They are offering scholarships to African students. And I went to Pennsylvania. I applied to, to enter university. And I was doing courses to do with leadership and other things. He was taken. I was denied. That's how God works. And he told me it's because I knew how to talk to the Muzungu. You, you did not know. It was not about knowing. It was about God raising me for a particular purpose. And sometime, do you remember the donkey? Where Balaam, it was carrying Balaam and it could see the angel. And it could not go forward. It could not go ahead. Because it was seeing the angel. Some of you, the donkey, <laughs> is seeing the angel. That is why you go in a particular way and God blocks you. If he is raising you for a particular purpose, he will block some of your opportunities. And you may think it is the devil doing that, but it is not the devil. You remember Jonah running away to Tarshish. So God blocked him, blocked him. He made the ship become, you know, there were storms and uh, everybody was repenting, throwing things into, into, the, into the sea. And then they were asking, who among us has sinned against God? And they, take, they took lots and it fell on who? Why did it not fall on other people? Because God was raising Jonah for a particular work. Then they to, he told them, throw me into the sea because he wanted to die. God said, he, you are not dying. Swallow him up. He brought a very big whale. I was looking at the, uh, they were, I was doing the study of a whale and I saw also another picture about the heart of a whale. It weighs 200 kilos. The heart itself, the heart of a whale. And if you are given uh, the heart of a whale to carry, you can't carry, Mr. Richard. You can't carry the heart of a whale. It's 200 kilos. 200 kilograms. Just the heart. And people ask, how was Jonah swallowed? If the heart is 200 kilos, what about the stomach? The stomach is a small house. You can even live there. And there is enough oxygen. <laughs> he stayed there inside. And God stopped the acid, the stomach acid, from killing his servant so that he may repent. And eventually Jonah in the, in, the, in the stomach of the well said, I repent. God commanded the well, go vomit him. And make sure you vomit him where I sent him. Don't vomit him where he is. He wanted to go. Vomit him where he sent him. Some of us, we may try so many things. But listen, if God is raising you for a particular purpose, you can't run away from it. So, God commanded those who were supposed to build the house of the Lord, whose spirit God had raised. So, there are people here, God raises you for particular work in the church. And you can't run away from it. You will not run away from it. Because God is raising you to do it. And even if you run away, don't you see some, some uh, what do we call them, drunkards? Have you met drunkards who sing worship? When they get drunk. Oh, and he's drunk. And he's singing worship and praises. Because he's a pastor. Refusing to serve the Lord. If you receive, refuse to serve the Lord, God will still mold you and take you back. There is a man I went to preach for in Muranga. He was old, the age of 65 and above. He ran away from being a pastor because people were fighting him. He entered into business full, full and he said, I will never be a pastor again. One day when he was doing business, doing very well, he heard a voice asking him, who told you to do this work? I never sent you to do. He looked behind, who is speaking? At the age of 60, I think 65. Do you know he gave that work to his son worth millions? He went and planted a church. And I went to preach in his church. And he had very many members at that old age. 
Why? He was raised by God for a particular work. Listen, some of you here, even if you run, you will still do the work of God. So number one, the people God works with are those who he raises for a particular purpose. Exodus 35 verse 21. So if God has raised you, whether you go to the mountains, you go to the valley, whether you hide under the table, God will come after you. Whether, and I'm telling you, don't waste your time running away. And listen, even if you want to die, he will not kill you. The stones will refuse to kill you. The border borders will refuse to hit you. Until you fulfill the work of the Lord. Hey, amen. There is nothing. We have told you, I have tried. I have tried all those things. Where you try to run away from the work of God. You try as much as possible. Then God brings you back. Me, I have run, my brother. I have run. I tried to run, but God brought me back. Number two, Exodus chapter 35, verse 21. Exodus 35, 21, please. You are there? That is Ezra. That's a plane. <laughs> my goodness, what is happening behind there? Okay, uh, today I have a lot of patience. I've been doing exercise, so I'm emotionally stable. Hey, hello. Do you know exercise makes you emotionally stable? When you do exercise, buka sirikangi haraka. Lakini kama ufanyi usweat kidogo, hiyo plane ningepiga kelele vile hujaona. You haven't gotten it. I hope you have your Bible. Can we go there? Me I have. I have written it. Exodus 35:21. The Bible says, then everyone came whose heart was stirred. Everyone came whose heart was stirred. And everyone whose spirit was willing, they brought the, Lord they, brought, they brought the Lord's offering for the work of the tabernacle or meeting, for all its services and for his holy garments. The Bible says, everyone whose spirit was willing, Every, everyone whose spirit made him willing. Number two, write it. God works with the people who are willing. God does not force people to do things unless he has raised you for a particular purpose. Are you getting? But willingness is a, is a quality God looks for so that you may become his vessel of important use. There is a verse I would like to give you so that you can understand what I mean because Maybe there are two kinds of vessels in the house of God. Two kinds of people in the kingdom of God. Number one, common people and people of special use. Let me show you. Let me show you. So that you, as I'm preaching, uh, can, you, can, you, can you open for me the book of Romans chapter 9? Verses 21. Romans chapter 9 verse 21. The moment you understand how God works, it becomes very easy for you. Can we read it together? Has not the potter power over the clay of the same lamb to make one vessel of honor and another vessel of dishonor? Go to the next verse, verse 22. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Another verse, the other verse. There is a verse I wanted that it says, special occasion. Some vessels are for special occasion. Ah, no. It's 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 20. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 20, please. I wanted to show you. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold, of silver, uh, but also of wood, of earth, some of honor and some of dishonor. Can you go to the next verse? If a man therefore purge himself of all these things, he shall become a vessel of honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, prepared for every good work. So there are two kinds of vessels. One, vessel of honor, vessel of dishonor. Common use, special use. How do you become a vessel of honor? The Bible says if you purge yourself from sin, if you have a different heart from other people. 
So God works with the people who are willing. If you are willing, God will use you. If you are willing, you will become a vessel of honor. The Bible says the harvest is ready, but they have the laborers are few. Most people don't present themselves as laborers. Very few people present themselves as what? Laborers. The harvest is truly what? Ready. But the harvesters are what? Few. Not many people are willing to do the work of the Lord. I was amazed, and I'm going to challenge you with this. I was amazed by a young man who came from Nigeria. And he came to meet me here in this church. And uh, when he came, he told me, Pastor, I'm new here, but already I've been doing crusades. Not without, without sound. All over, free area, Kiratina, everywhere, in the streets here. He, sends me, he sent me videos of people getting born again. Walking in the city, preaching, telling people repent, change, come to Christ doing meetings in Kiratina alone and people surround him listen to him one day he came to me and told me I heard the word Karatina he went to Karatina he has never been to Karatina that's where my wife comes from and he stood there in the market and preached people got born again that man is willing to do the work of the Lord God will supply to him every need he wants and I have seen God supplying to that young man. He will become mighty in this land. Why? Willingness. Now tell somebody to go preach here. They tell you, Pastor, I'm hungry. <laughs> First give me something to eat before I go preach. This church, we are starting one day. We will be putting on, what do you call that? Refractor jackets. Even myself. I am going to choose. I will tell you the day. We will be going through the streets. And we will tell people to repent. How young men, you know the young men that are saying, I can preach. Let them show me they can preach. Let them. Me have done street worship for three years. I've done it. I've been chasing out of shops. I've been chased. If, if you cannot be able to do one on one. Nowadays you tell somebody, go preach, I'm hungry. I can't preach without getting food. Can you take me back there? <laughs> I remember when I was in Nairobi, I couldn't get a, a place, a, a chance. Our church was doing very well. I couldn't get a chance to, to minister in my father's church. I couldn't. There were people who were, had gone before me. There were people who had taken their positions. I decided, Mudhurwa, I will go. Those are people there. They are not cows. They are people in Mudhurwa. I will preach to them. I will go Immediately in the morning, after morning glory, I will carry my Bible and I will enter Modurwa with my Bible. Those women have just sent their, their children to school. I will start preaching to them house to house and they will give their lives to Jesus. Some will welcome me for tea and I will drink the tea as I'm preaching. Some will tell me I used to go to church but have, and then I will welcome them. I, I carried some, 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 what do you call them, handbills for our church. I will tell them, if you don't go to church, please come on this day. And if you come, when you see me there seated with other people in front of the church, come and say hi. When we are praising there, I was among the team that was sitting in front there but doing nothing. Because the church, the positions were taken. But when I'm, somebody will come and tell them, hey, pastor, young pastor, you remember you preached me in Modurua? I'm here. <laughs> I'm here in church. And later I will see those people becoming great tithers. They will get good jobs in the house of God. And I will be happy. A young evangelist. I changed tactic. I went to Glogon. Glogon there, there where the mechanics are. I will stand on one of the vehicles that is old. With my Bible. With a friend of mine called Ken. And I will start preaching. And after preaching the women who, who have vibanda. You know those things where they cook food. They will give me food for free. They will tell me young preacher. After this go up continue preaching. I will preach to mechanics. They will give their lives to Jesus. I will bring them to church. Was I doing the work of God? Yes. I was not getting the position to preach in church. But yet I was pushing the kingdom of God to go forward. How many people can do that? 
And yet I, I had a problem with my leg, a lot of pain. I would pull my leg. Even when I met my wife, I was doing that work. I was so dusty. One day, my wife told me, can you come meet my sister, my elder sister? I told her, look at the way I am. Because I had come from preaching. That man of God preaches in the streets. So I had a lot of dust in my shoes. And my wife told me, don't worry, my sister does not have trouble. She's okay. Come, we go. And we went to the sister. I would talk as I'm doing my legs like this. I don't want her to see. Because this is my future sister-in-law. I don't want her to see that I'm dusty. I thank God for those things I did. I meet people in Nairobi, they tell me, I got born again through your street preaching. I got born again. In heaven, I will be paid. I will be. But nowadays, people don't want to do it. People are comfortable. If pastor is not giving me a chance, let it stay. No. Go out into the streets. Cry out in the streets. The Lord loves you. And don't go looking for money. Don't go looking for money. Preach God will provide for you. Say a good amen. amen. One day, Ms. Uh, Richard, I went to see one of the cousins of my wife. He was on wheelchair. He was not born again. But a very rich cousin, seated in a wheelchair. I entered there. I told him I have come to preach to you. I was going around. Then my wife told me, I was told you preached to my cousin. A very rich young man. And then he, now my wife went and introduced me formally to this cousin. From that day, the cousin will give me good things. I will find chicken ready before I preach. He will say, eat fast. After I finish, I will continue preaching. Do you know out of all that, that's where I met people who became my great supporters in ministry. Even today as we are talking, one particular person I met through my door-to-door -door ministry, there was a time she gave one million towards the buying of the land of this church. And I met them in the streets. Listen, whoever that has a willing heart, God will use you. God will do what? He will use you. But if you're not willing, you just want to eat mandazi, you just want to go around town saying hi, talking about BBI, and how Raila and Ruto. Now listen, plus all those things, preach to these people. And we are going to raise missionaries here. We will be putting jackets. I'm going back to the ministry I used to do when I was a youth. We will be going around here. I will be carrying my Bible. And I will be entering those halls. Please, I am here. My name is Ben Nganga. I wanted to talk to you about Jesus. And I will tell you the day. Let me see those scared people. What they will do. You know, you, we, we like honor. You know, you only kazi aibu. Nistaki aibu aibu. Kwanza nitava three piece. I will look very good with my jacket. And I will start going. Some places you will be rejected. That is normal. They will tell you get out of here. We will not be here. But do you know one day when I go to heaven. I will have done the work of the Lord. God uses people who are willing. Willingness. Where has willingness gone? We have left evangelism to the pastor. Yet evangelism should be for every believer. Ebu turn to your neighbor, tell them you're an evangelist. You're an evangelist. We are supposed to bring people to Christ. Hey, say a good amen. amen. The last one. Well, let me give you two more. Exodus 25 verse 2. Exodus 25 verse 2. So willingness is a sign and qualifies you to be used of God. Willingness. Do you see even when we are saying we are buying land, willingness to support that project qualifies you for, God to, for, for, for you to become a vessel. A vessel that God can use. Can we read it together? Speak unto the children of Israel that they may bring me an offering of every man that giveth what? Willingly. With his heart. Ye shall take my offering. So even the offering God says, don't take an offering from somebody who is not willing. Don't take it. And that is why I am very honest. If somebody came here and uh, let's say gave or gave, I was talking to another pastor 
one of the members came and said, I want back. I think they gave something in the church. I don't know if it was a fridge or a TV. And the member came and said, I wanted back. The pastor told me, I'm not going to give the person back. I had a Marian attacker. I'm not going to give him. He gave to God, not to me. I told the person, this is the verse I read to them. Don't take an offering from somebody who is not willing. Give it back. Give it back. Hey, amen. So even an offering should be what? Willingness. God blesses people who have willingness to support his work. Not people who are compelled to do it. But somebody who says from his heart, I'm going to support this work. I'm going to stand with the work of the Lord. How many people will be willing? How many people will say, I'll be willing to support the work of God. I know God will bless me. When you go look at people beaten down by sickness and disease in hospital almost dying, you can understand this money we have here on earth is nothing. It is nothing. So the other word here is anyone who, is, who compels himself. Exodus 36 verse 2. Exodus 36 verse 2. Let me finish with that one. Exodus 36. So if you're writing number three, people who, whose heart compels them to give. Cheerful givers. Go, uh, if you're writing number three, we were number where? Number one, number two. We, cast, we said somebody who is willing. Okay, number three, write somebody, somebody with a cheerful heart towards the Lord. You know, when you give cheerfully. God uses people who are cheerful. They don't do the work of God with it. Oh God, why is God always asking money? Why is God always telling us to go preach? Cheerfulness, you'll be a candidate for God to use you. Can we work for the Lord with joy? Can we work for the Lord with celebration? Can we work with, for the Lord with a heart of joy? Yeah, the last one. The Bible says that Moses called Bazarel and Ohaliab and every wise-hearted man. Wise-hearted what? Man, in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom. The Lord had put what? Wisdom. Even everyone whose heart stirred him up. Stirred him up to come up unto the work of the Lord. Write number four. If you're writing anyone who's, who's the Lord has put wisdom in their heart. There are people who you have a gift. It is not yours. It is God who put it in you so that he may use you for his kingdom. Hey, amen. Do you know why you sing? Why do you sing? It's not because you are better than other singers. I know your voice is very good. Why does God give her this, a very beautiful for her to, to sing in the bathroom? Hello? For her to appear on TV? No. That gift that comes into you, God puts it for a purpose. For his kingdom. So everyone gifted here, God will use you. You are supposed to know that. And then finally, number five, write this down. The one who has a stirred spirit. The stirring of the spirit. The moving of the spirit. Have you ever been moved to do something? Hey, amen. I was talking to a pastor some time back. And then he asked me, I heard you talk about you on TV. I saw the hall there. You have a lot of bills to pay. How do you afford and your church is not very big. How do you make it? Do you know what I rely on? I relied on this. By the way, this is what I rely on. People who are stirred up to support this work. I have found people. I remember when we were doing our first project, somebody was stirred up to give their land. That was 800,000. Another one later, we got about four pieces of land. People stirred up to give. I never told them, go bring your land. Musukumo na kiswahili. Musukumo. There was a time I told you I was seated in church. I was stirred up to give my car. Nobody told me to give the car. I was stirred up to do it. And I took the keys of my car, bought it for 500,000, took it into the altar. I was stirred up to do it. Hey, amen. There are, people, there are many, who, many people who have cars. Do they give? No, I'm just asking, do they give? No. But you may be stirred up, musukumo. But do you know what people do? Hiyo musukumo unaifinya. 
there is somebody who came to give an offering in the office. She had 890,000 Kenya shillings. Stirred by God. She's not a rich woman. But God stirred her to bring that offering when we were new in Nakur. She came into the office with 890,000. She told me, Pastor, I was pushed by God to bring this offering. But how many people will obey when the Lord start, stirs you up? The Lord stirs you up to come pray here. How many people will obey? The Lord stirs up you to go do some, those things I'm saying, crusades. Like I remember, there is a young man here who came and told me, not a young man, he's married. He came and told me, I'm stirred up to do crusades. He, he's in the team of priesting. And we have been doing crusades with him, with our Lord. Because there is a stirring up. I see it naturally. It is a stirring up. There is a burden in him. He goes, looks for things without even me. He, he tells me, there is this. I have already gotten this. I have gotten this. I tell him now, take the Lord. Let's go preach the gospel. Stirring up. God works with the people who accept the burden. Write that down. Number five is the burden. When you are stirred up, it is the burden. God puts a burden in you. I had a burden to come to Nakuru to preach. I was stirred up to come. Then God will use me. How many people will accept that burden? When you are pushed. It is like when labor comes. Does it stop? Push. Until the baby comes. If the Lord has put a burden in you. Don't quench it. Don't put it off. If the Lord has put a burden in you to do something for God, like I remember there was a lady who came to me after Solai. You remember Solai? The dam that killed so many people? The lady was in this church and she came to me and said, God has stirred me. I feel a burden in my heart. She never used the word stirred. But I feel a burden in my heart to go to one of the churches there and I buy seats for them. The whole church. I put seats. It is a stirring. I remember also we were stirred up to build. Do you remember we built one of the cha churches in uh, Solai? It was a, a burden we had. It was not being pushed. It was not being compelled. It was a burden and we followed it up. And we thank God that church has a roof because this church gave. We all gave. I remember we gave almost a hundred. Was it almost? How much was it? I can't remember. We gave, we gave iron sheet. I can't remember how much it was costing. But how many people will accept the burden of the Lord in their heart? How many? Can you just bow your head for one minute and meditate on this word? Meditate on this word. Meditate on this word. Meditate on this word. God works with the people he has raised to do a particular thing in the house of God and in his kingdom. God works with people who are willing. Willingness of heart is a sign that God is going to use you. God works with people in whom he has put wisdom. In whom he has put a gift. In whom he has enabled and given a talent for a particular purpose in his work. God works with people who allow themselves to be stirred up. People who carry the burden of the work of God. People who carry the burden of the work of God. People who carry the burden of the work of God. How many people will accept the burden of his work? How many people will support the work of God because they have a burden? We allow the burden to die out. We, allow the, we, we, we quench the oil in us. But I pray today, if there is a burden God has given you, don't give up on it. Don't give up on it. And sometimes when the burden comes, we may get tired. Don't get tired if the burden is there. May the Lord use you for his glory. May the Lord use you. Because a time will come when you will go to heaven. That time is coming. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless those who are alive uh, until we meet in the Kiswahili service. God bless you. Amen. And may God give them a burden. You know, 